my friends, we are back in Cleveland today to document some serious superhero history. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Hello, Cleveland. And right there directly in front of us is the stadium. I had to stop and put this mural on because I'm a huge Ohio State fan and a big LeBron fan. Here's a mural to some of the local athletic stars, but LeBron is not the superhero that we are talking about today. We're actually gonna go to the home of the man who invented Superman. Sadly, most of the neighborhood looks like it's rather run down now. Well, I wanted to show you guys this. This was not our intended stop. This is not one of those vlogs where I say, hey guys, check out what used to be here, that something else is here now. No, the house does still exist. It was actually a partnership in a way. Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, two Glenville High School students imbued with imagination and talent and passion for science fiction and comics, had dreamed become reality in 1932. They created Superman, the first of the superheroes ever to see print. The 1932 prototype was of a villainous superhero. Superman then became the hero who has been called the Action Ace, the Man of Steel, and the Man of Tomorrow. And then if you move to the other side, it says, although the success of Superman spawned an entire industry, publishers and newspaper syndicates did not originally accept the creation. Superman did not appear until 1938 when he became a lead feature on the cover of Action Comics number one. As co-creators of the most famous of mythical beings, Siegel and Schuster infused popular American culture with one of the most endearing icons of the 20th century. Superman has appeared in animated series, live action series, major motion pictures, advertisements, and comic books, where his popularity grows with each generation of readers. Now Schuster's house is gone, but they do have a little bit of a memorial there. I'll take us by, but first I wanna to go to Jerry Siegel's house. Nice frames of houses, but they've all just deteriorated over time. So check it out, Jerry Siegel's house. Now one of the things I read online was that the people that live in here now bought it in um, the early 80s and within like two years of buying the place they found out that this was this was Jerry's house, this is where I grew up. Now this used to be the Jewish quarter of Cleveland and what I read was that his parents were um, Lithuanian refugees and so when they came here they changed their name to Siegel. His father became a uh, local tailor and his tailoring shop was robbed and he had a heart attack during the robbery and died. Now, um, Jerry Siegel and Joel Schuster were friends from high school. And so Joel actually lived just a few blocks away from here. And uh, they created Superman and they just couldn't find a publisher like we saw on that last plaque um, until they finally got, you know, they got one place to put it out and then they were offered to sell the rights to Superman um, to Detective Comics, I believe it was originally, and they agreed to do it for $130, are you kidding me? Now, they said they did regret that decision because of how huge Superman eventually became, but luckily for them, um, when the rights were bought, they saw how um, important Schuster and Siegel were to this project so they actually retained them as the writers for the comic so they weren't completely out of luck but what's cool is that the people that live here now are so proud that this was like the birthplace of Superman that they went ahead and they have decked out the whole place in Superman stuff. Isn't that awesome? So now they have a plaque right here that says this is the house where Superman was born. Writer Jerry Siegel, he lived here, well he was they have his birth and death dates, but he was, the family lived here uh, when he was born, 1914. So his writer Jerry Siegel, alive from 1914 to 1996, was a teenage boy who lived here during the Great Depression, one of the toughest economic times for Cleveland and the country. Jerry wasn't popular. He was a dreamer and he knew how to dream big. With his best friend, artist Joel Schuster, these two boys created a bright fantasy world of spaceships, strange planets, and a city where a young man in red and blue tights could leap over tall buildings in a single bound. They called him Superman. They didn't just give us the world's first superhero, they gave us something to believe in. And that's basically what I read online. They say the whole purpose in keeping this decorated in this whole Superman 
um, motif is just to remind kids from the neighborhood and remind everybody that comes to visit it that you can make a dream come true. You can create something in your mind and it can go on and live forever. And they've pretty much done it. I mean, you can tell everything up here is, is all Superman all the way uh, over top of the uh, address and everything they've Supermaned it out. Pretty cool. That is so cool. Now, as I understand, um, basically Jerry came up with the idea for Superman and Joel was the artist. And so Joel was the one who created the image of Superman and so they were partners together. Now, this is obviously, like I said, this is Jerry's house, but Joel, um, oh, look at that. If you look way up in the very top window up here, you can see they've got some like Superman jammies in the, in the window. So this house still exists, but they said the house that Joel Schuster lived in is now gone. Um, but they do have a little bit of a memorial there where it was. So we're gonna go over and see if we can't find that. Now I read online that the people that live here are actually very friendly and on occasion when people have come here to take a look at the house, they've invited him in to take a look at the inside of the house. I'm not going to go and knock on their door or anything, but I just thought this was so cool that somebody that bought this house not knowing the history and then finding it out was like us and said, you know what, this needs to be documented so people can come visit and, and remember. And like I said, the whole reason they've kept this up is just to give everyone something to believe in, that dreams do come true if you, if you believe they can, if you work on it. Now, as I understand it, we should be able to find the old property of Schuster by something that they put on a gate. So we'll go look and see if we can't find that at the intersection. And don't worry, it's yellow, not green, so it's not kryptonite. I just passed this in the neighborhood as I was driving around. So now we're, look at that house, holy Christmas falling apart. We just gotta go a few blocks away and we'll be at Joe Schuster's house. It is a shame what has happened to some of these houses, man. Oh, I should mention, as I was, uh, I was watching back one of my last clips, my Midwestern draw has been coming back since I've been here, so. His name's Joe Schuster, not Joel. I'm realizing as I was listening, I'm like, why, do I, why does it sound like I'm saying Joel? <laughs> Sorry about that. It is Joe. Well, even though the house isn't here anymore, they did one cool thing. They put an honorary title to the street that he lived on. You can see Joe Schuster Lane up there with the Superman symbol. And uh, its cross street is, its cross street is Lois Lane. So right here on this corner, there's now a house here, uh, but his original house is gone. Joe Schuster's house, the guy who came up with the design, the look of Superman, this was his house. So what they did to honor him, which is really cool because online I was going to be a little bummed because what I had read was that they put the original sheets in honor of Action Comics number one and that they had them all here, but that a drunk driver had hit this fence at one time and wiped them out. And uh, they said that because of that, some of the pages were missing and some of them have, had deteriorated from the damage, so it kind of like ruined the storyline. But as I get here, I'm noticing they've replaced them all. So this little placard here says, on this site once stood the home where Superman was turned from words into pictures. Joe Schuster, 1914 to 1992, came to Cleveland from Canada. He liked sports and comic strips. He drew all the time on boxes, wrapping paper, and even old wallpaper. With his best friend, Jerry Siegel, he turned amazing stories about a man of steel into four colored, crea <laughs> four -colored reality. <laughs> Joe made the whole world look fresh and clean and strong. He made it look super. With the creation of Superman, these two friends showed the world that the most ordinary of us can turn out to be the most heroic. Now a little addition to the story as I was telling you is Jerry ended up getting drafted and ended up going into the war and while he was gone DC Comics, Detective Comics, who bought the rights to Superman, without his approval they went ahead and published Superboy. It was a, a short story or it was a writing that Jerry had done when he was younger and they published it without his approval so he went ahead and 
they sued DC not only for publishing Superboy, but they also sued him for the rights to Superman, and then eventually ended up uh, settling for like, I believe $94,000. So this, June 1938, Action Comics number one, that's what it looks like. If you, uh, if you ever see one at a garage sale, I'd recommend you pick it up, <laughs> as it's worth a lot of money now. But there he is, the Man of Steel. And then here's the actual entire comic. I believe they said it's 12 or 14 pages. Look at that. The introduction of Superman right there. How rad is that? Now, I myself am not a huge comic book fan, and I did love the Superman movie with Christopher Reeve that I saw when I was a kid, but I love history so much, and to know that something that has given so much joy to so many kids over their life, I just had to swing by and see it. And there you can see, looks like Clark Kent. Listen, Chief, if I can't find out anything about this Superman, no one can. And look, didn't originally have that same Superman S that we that we know now. It's a bit different. Uh-oh, and this one, Superman's in some serious trouble. He's got a knife on him. So here you can see a picture of what the two look like if you're interested. Jerry Siegel and Joel Schuster. I'm so glad they replaced this, how cool. How cool. And it's even got like that uh, plastic covering so that it can't can't wither away. I'm sure if some idiot decides they want to destroy it, they could, but. There you go. Hope you guys have enjoyed getting to see this, especially if you're a Superman fan. You know what I really think would have been cool, even though it probably would have been destroyed over time, is right underneath this sign, the, uh, the crossroads of Parkwood and Almer, the Lois Lane slash Joe Schuster Lane uh, memorial, is if it were me, since it's right here across from where all the comics and everything are, I would have put a phone booth right here, you know, like where Clark Kent could hop in and turn into Superman. That would have been pretty cool, I think. Or, you know, even right over here, but then again, you know, like I said, somebody would have the brilliant idea of destroying it for fun, so. Now, of course, we know that there's a metropolis and that they honor Superman as though, you know, he's from there, but really he was born right here in Cleveland. And now you know. Well, I think we're gonna go ahead and call it a day for this vlog. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and if you'd like to help to support this channel, uh, this type of adventure, go to patreon.com slash jordanthelion. You can make a small donation monthly, or go to merch5.com and buy one of my t-shirts. That's right, where the pages and the image of Superman was founded. Have a great night, everyone. Goodbye.